time in YouTube and welcome back to Deck Profiles. Today we are going to be revisiting Gardevoir GX. I know it hasn't been that long, but in that short time period, Worlds has happened and Gardevoir dominated. It took the entire tournament, and by that I mean Garbodor took the entire tournament. There were six of them in the top eight, but Gardevoir pushed through, tossed aside all the garbage, and says, I I am the princess. I am the victor, and I am going to be taking the spotlight this year. Uh, helmed by Diego Casiraga, this is his deck. We are just going to see if we can play it to any benefit like he did. Um, so Gardevoir GX is the 200 HP fairy type Pokemon. Stage 2 has a secret spring ability. Once during your turn, you may attach a fairy energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. This means you get two drops per turn with one guard. If you get multiple guards out, that can power up Gardevoir so quickly because of its infinite, infinite force. For one fairy energy, you are going to do 30 times the amount of energy attached to Gardevoir. And the opponent's active Pokemon as well. So you get that huge amount of energy onto Gardevoir, and then you take the whatever energy they've got on theirs, and you just do a massive amount of damage. Um, but what really helped Gardevoir against all those Garbodor decks is the Twilight GX attack. For one fairy energy, you get to shuffle 10 cards from your discard pile into your deck. This meant that you could set up turn 1 and 2, get your all your items out, do what you had to do, and then on your next turn if you needed to, you could Twilight GX, put all those items back in, and Garb was doing like nothing. Garb's doing no damage to you. Now a few of the techs that he was running in this deck, he is running one Gallade. Uh, stage 2, 150 HP fighting type Pokemon with Premonition. Once during your turn, you may look at the top 5 cards of your deck, put them back on top of your deck in any order. Which is really, really strong with another partner he has in the deck. Um, but what's really cool about this is this does give him that opportunity to hit for fighting weakness. Uh, so if he doesn't need to use the, gu uh, the Guard of War, Gallade is another fantastic attacker with that sensitive blade. For just a double colorless energy drop, you could do 60 damage or 130 if you played a supporter this turn. And let's be honest here, most times you are going to be playing at least a supporter per turn. Um, next up, our few techs here are going to be one Diancy 90 HP fairy type Pokemon. Uh, basic has that sparkling wish attack. Uh, you can search your deck for a card that evolves from one of your Pokemon and put it onto that Pokemon to evolve it, then shuffle your deck afterwards. Uh, we are also partnering this up with the Alolan Vulpix. I kind of like the, the Vulpix a little better personally, but I understand the use of having both. Uh, depending on the situation, you need to get that Gardevoir or that Gallade out immediately so that Diancy actually is quite good. And the problem with the Alolan Vulpix its attack is beacon that you're going to be using. It doesn't cost you any energy. However, uh, you only get to search for two Pokemon and put them into your hand. So you can't just immediately evolve them. So your opponent does have the opportunity to end or have some way to get rid of your hand. Uh, they can manipulate and there. You're, you're, you're back to square one. Um, lastly though for Pokemon is the Tapu Lele GX which is pretty common now in every deck and we are running the Octillery. This is the partner that actually works very well with the Gallade. Uh, the Premonition, you get to look at the top five cards, you get to reorganize them, and then Octillery will help you draw those cards. So you can kind of go deep into the deck with the Premonition. Uh, you get to kind of have that little bit of information, figure out what you want to do next, and then Abyssal Hand will help you get those cards that you want. The problem with it is he has only one copy of Octillery. Um, personally, and in those couple matches I did watch of his, he had those Octillery's prize, so it made it very difficult to get them out. Um, but anyway, moving on to the item cards, we do have two Field Blower, very staple card now. You get to choose, two any, choose two of any combination of uh, stadiums or tool cards, and you can remove them. Uh, we have three Rare Candy, it helps us evolve into our Guard of Wards slash Gallades. Uh, we've got the Rescue Stretcher, we can pull a Pokemon from the discard pile back into our hand, or we can just shuffle them back into the deck. Uh, we've got a Super Rod, does the same three, like, it, it does similar things to the Rescue Stretcher, but it does get you your energy back as well, uh, but you can only shuffle, you can't just grab it back into your hand. Uh, we've got the Ultra Ball, uh, you get to discard two cards, reveal Pokemon, you can put it in your hand, beautiful. We've got the last instances of the Via Seeker, this is it for Via Seeker as of right now. 
Uh, VS Seeker will be rotating unless they reprint it. Sun and Moon will not be allowed to play it in standard format. Um, but pretty much you get to put a supporter card from your discard pile back into your hand. Uh, we've got a brand new tech in Acerola. Put one of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it and all cards attached to it into your hand. So for one, the Pokemon does need to be damaged before you can actually draw it back up. Now, with this, it's very good because you can get a damaged Pokemon off the bench. You can get all those cards that are attached to it back into your hand. Um, it's very reminiscent of the AZ supporter, but the difference here is you do get to keep everything. Downside is something does have to be damaged to use it. Um, but let's be honest here, with all these big bulky Pokemon now, it's not too hard to use Acerola. Um, we are running a Bridget. Uh, Bridget's very common right now. It's a great partner with Tapu Lele. Let's you get those basics onto the bench um, really quickly. Great start up to the game. Uh, we have Guzma. Brand new Guzma. He was... He was literally one of the big stars of Worlds this year. He was helping out so many players win their games, or the the, the person that destroyed a lot of people's games. Uh, we've got Hex Maniac. Uh, you get to turn off abilities for a turn, which is great. Uh, we have the N. Each player shuffles their hand back into their deck and draws cards equal to the remaining prize cards. Uh, we've got Sycamore. You get to discard your hand, draw seven. We've only got one choice band. Uh, this lets us do 30 more damage to our opponent's active Pokemon, as long as it's GX or EX. Um, now here's a here's the new energy that we we're not seeing a lot of, and that is the Wonder Energy. Uh, this can only be attached to a Fairy. Uh, however, it prevents all effects of attacks except damage done to the Fairy Pokemon. So no paralysis, no confusion, nothing like that. You can't remove their energy because this is what's preventing that. Lastly, we've got four Double Colorless and seven Fairy Energy. Now, this is the deck that won Worlds, aka this deck has a lot of potential to win games. I'm not going to be telling you right now that I can do it though. I'll be honest with you, I am not a professional TCG player, so I'm here just to try them out. But let's see if I can helm this deck to two wins on TCG Online. Alright guys, we're going into match number once against Vein. I think it's a non-steel deck. <laughs> so for those of you who, oh, obviously you wouldn't know, you're watching this as the first video, I think I've played like six steel decks in a row and it's like, okay, can't compete here. Like, and I don't mean like just Metagross, I mean like I played against uh, Scizor, uh, Genesect, all of these Pokemon, it's like, guys, I understand Guardi is a threat, but, but come on, hold off. Anyway, we're going to see if this is going to be a decent match here. The other the other games, like I had a Remoraid once and he didn't, I didn't even get a chance to play. He just set up way too fast. Uh, but I'm hoping this game will be better. I have Ralts in the front. I can Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele. I can get a whole ton of... I don't even need to! I have Tapu Lele now in the hand. Um, and we're going to see... We are playing a fellow Gardevoir deck! So this is going to be actually a lot of fun. See which Guardi can take out which Guardi first. Um, we should be able to first because we are able to technically draw or attack first. Uh, so we are just going to drop the top of Lele down. Uh, I am going to go for Bridget. I want to see who's in this deck though. Uh, Alolan Vulpix is here. Very crucial thing. Um, I have noticed that you want to check, you want to go through your cards very thoroughly, uh, especially if you're searching for like one ofs. Uh, because if you're not there, we're in trouble. So thankfully for me, like I have Octillery, I have a little Vulpix, I am pretty good to go. Uh, I only have two Guardies though. So we are just going to bridge it up. We're going to get that. I have Remoraid down already, so I can go for two of these and one of these. Now I can drop this energy down here because I can't... I think I might have misplayed. No, I can go for an Octillery next turn. Either way, we're going to drop this energy down onto this Ralts. I'll be able to drop another energy down onto the leading Ralts to get him out of there for... Er, it out of there for the Alolan Vulpix. And my opponent is doing the exact same thing here. Going for that Tapu Lele, goes for that Bridget. Uh, will be able to get the same kind of bench space down as me, but I'll have one potential more Pokemon. Um, just because I have the Ralts, uh, the Remoraid to start, 
It does not go for the Alolan Vulpix though. Maybe it does not run it, but it's actually doing the exact same play. So we legit had a mirror turn there. Um, my play here is to get Remore or Octillery out. I don't think I'm gonna need the Gallade this match. I'm gonna opt to sacrifice the Field Blower and the Gallade because I want to get Gardevoir going ASAP. Uh, this way I have the opportunity to get a few more cards um, without potentially having to use my supporter. So I want an Abyssal Hand here. Potentially get a Gardevoir. No, I do not get that Gardevoir. We're just going to evolve this one here into a Curlia. Sorry, I have Gardevoir. I meant Rare Candy. And I'm not going to Sycamore here. I have too many resources in back. Um, we're just going to retreat into this Vulpix. We're going to go for another Curlia. Actually, I might go for... I might go for another Guardi and a Curlia. In case I do happen to get um, a Rare Candy. I have three of them in the deck, so they're not gone. I think that is my play. So we should be at a bit of an advantage here because of the Alolan Vulpix. We have all these evolutions in hand. If my opponent does decide to end, though, that will be the advantage. Uh, so we do see it's a it's the uh, uh, other Curly. It does go for an Eva Soda here to evolve into Octillery using different methods, but still the same idea here. Uh, we have the Octillery is down, Curly is down. Uh, my opponent will be Ultra Balling here, sacrificing what looks like a uh, Skyla and a Pokemon Center Lady for a Gardevoir GX. Now, if I can ma- Oh, and it has this rare candy! But they have no- they have no more hand. Oh, I lie, they have Octillery. What am I talking about? So they are in perfect shape. They are actually in the lead now, because they've got a Gardevoir down. Um, and I don't think- uh, I don't think they've- they have not uh, used a supporter yet either. So if they wanted to NS, get rid of these cards in our hands, they can do that. But they are just going to Skyla, which is fine by me. They can do that. They might just go for an Eva Soda here. Goes for a Switch! Um, and that will actually get this Gardevoir into play here. Uh, that is fine by me, because you're just going to take out my Alolan Vulpix, and I'm going to actually get some damage down, or some much needed damage, down onto your Gardevoir. So I'm actually really glad I grabbed two. Uh, so I can Rare Candy up one Ralts into another Gardevoir. I can drop the other Curly down. I'm going to drop a Wonder Energy down onto this Gardevoir up here. I am going to Sycamore before I do anything. Uh, this way I get... Yep, there's the Energy Drops. Whew. Okay. There isn't much I can play. There is not much I can play. Uh, I want to make sure that you can't hit me for a lot of damage. So, 3, 6, 9, 12. I can two-shot you right now, and if you drop a double colorless energy down right now, it won't hurt too much. I want a secret spring onto my second one, then. This way I have the opportunity to get, get two of them set up, and not give my opponent the opportunity to just one-shot my Gardevoir. I don't want to get too greedy. I'm going to leave the two Pokemon in hand, just in case, and this way I can also pick up this Gardevoir with my Acerola. So I'm going to Infinity Force here, get that damage down, 120, easy mode. Um, I'll be able to pick up these two energies, and I can actually start setting up this Gardevoir in the back for my main hitter, uh, which is what we're going to try and do here. If my opponent wants to hit, does get their second uh, Gardevoir down, um, I think I am missing one. I think this is it. I think the other one is currently dis, uh, benched. Uh, so we see 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 does not have that opportunity to hit me for max damage, which is absolutely beautiful, because we should be able to knock out this Gardevoir in, theoretically, one hit. Uh, if they have a Fairy Energy, I don't think even that's going to save them. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18... <sighs> Actually, Choice Ban and Fairy Energy could one-shot me. It could one-shot me. Just goes for the se Ooh, Secret Spring. I thought they were attacking. Does drop the Fairy Energy down. 
Oh, but the second Guardian will come in and get that additional energy, and that will actually take me out. But, I didn't get greedy. Here's the thing, I didn't get greedy. So, all that energy is going to hit the discard pile on their turn. I'll have another Gardevoir and a Choice Pan on the second one, that's fine. That's actually a decent play. That was a decent play. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24 is more than enough to knock me out. But they should really see that I've got enough damage down here to knock it out too on the following turn. Like, I didn't want to knock this thing out. Not that I could have, but Infinity Force will knock me out here. Uh, it does take two prizes. I have to go into my Guard of War here. Now, my objective is to Hex Maniac here. I think. Just drop down the double colors. This this will be enough to take out the Guardi. This will be enough to take out this Guard of War. I don't want to drop this Remorate. Uh, 369. I don't even know what I'm counting. Uh, we are going to Hex Maniac. And this is going to stop my opponent's Guard of War from being able to set up on me. Uh, so we are just going to go for that Infinity Force. It's doing 270 damage. It will knock it out. Uh, and we should be able to hit the opponents first. Uh, we do get a Guard of War, so that is absolutely wonderful. Uh, it does to set up the Gallade. Um, if I could get a Guzma here, that would be perfect. Because I want to hit my opponents first. Uh, they don't have a lot of energy going for it. They can't Premonition. They can't Octillery. Uh, so it's alright by me. Um, that, that Hex Maniac was very good play for us. Sorry, just checking on the kitty cat. Uh, so our opponent is going to Sycamore. Uh, Eva Soda is going to get to the Curlia stage. Whew, this is a match, guys. Now, I am down a prize, technically speaking. And goes for a Choice Band here. That is fine. I'm actually just going to be able to ask the Roller here and pick up the free knockout against this Gallade. Uh, that's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Yeah, that, that, that is a free knockout for us. So just play the Acerola. We're going to pick up this Guardi. Put up our Curlia. We're going to evolve into Gardevoir. Put you back down. I have a Rare Candy set up for you. Uh, we are going to drop the Double Colorless Energy as our drop. We can go for our Secret Spring, uh, make sure that you get the additional energy, and this will knock out this Glade. And again, set my opponent back quite a bit. Hopefully. Uh, we'll actually tie up this matchup. And from the looks of it, is that my last play? I have Arcandy in hand, Gardevoir. Yes, so we're just going to go for the Infinity Force, take out this Glade, and tie up the game. We're in the same position now where it, we need three prizes, so it is still a very close game, but I have the energy on a Pokemon, he does not. Uh, in comes the Gardevoir, but that doesn't mean anything. He has so much energy, though, in the discard pile from that one Guardi. Uh, he's lost three double colorless and four energy. There's a second double colorless! And a secret spring! Uh, so 369, 12, 15, 18. I can just Acerola up the uh, Gardevoir though, I'm not too big of a problem right now. Uh, but he's gonna end us before I can do that! Oh, we need to be a Seeker bad. Come on, we got a choice ban. That's not good. That's not good. So we're gonna take 210 damage. Actually, do we knock you? No, no. That was 210 with the choice ban. I really just need to drop all these cards down ASAP. Kind of open up our hand to a potential here. If I get one energy, I think I can knock you out. Because uh, we do the same. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. I have two opportunities here to land on a fairy energy. 
And I did get it, so we'll be able to knock out this guy. And actually take lead position. With a guard of war still, well, we're still in the same position where we've got a guard of war uh, kind of set up as well. Um, I've already played the curly of this turn, so I think I think my play is actually to ask uh, to hex maniac, so my opponent cannot get more than one energy down. But that's not really going to matter. That's not going to matter. Uh, I do want to just take this guy out. So we'll do 240, knock out that Guard of War, and we are currently in the lead. We got exactly kind of the two cards we needed. Um, my opponent will bring up this Curly. It just does need one energy to attack me, and it will knock me out. Um, which is unfortunate, but true. Um, we have lost quite a bit of our energy as well. Actually, we haven't. We've only lost three. We've only lost three energy so far. My opponent is just going to Guzma up this Octillery. That is fine. Um, and he's going to try and pass this turn. But that actually is going to give us the game here. Because we just need to drop this energy down and go for the Guzma ourselves. My opponent trying to stall us out. But it actually just, we just reversed the game, and there it is, there is the victory for Gardevoir. Oh, what a close matchup. Guardi vs. Guardi is a very intense matchup, and we were able to come through because of that Acerola being able to pick up the Gardevoir, uh, making sure that our opponent did not get a free knockout on us, and we were able to give us, give our opponent a bit of more of a run up for their money. That Acerola is such a powerful uh, tech in this deck where it, it, it's, it's a phenomenal card. It's a phenomenal card. Uh, but with that though, let's look into number two, uh, game number two and see if we can pull off either another win or just another fantastic match like this one. Alright guys, match number two is against Nato playing what looks to be a fire deck with Tapu Lele. So I don't know what it's gonna be, but it's gonna be an interesting game for sure. And uh, let's see if we can manage to pull through this. Let's manage if we can pull through this. So we've got double Ralts. I have Bridget in hand, so I don't actually need Tapu Lele for this matchup yet. Um, which is really cool. I will be going second, unfortunately. So it means I will be slower on the evolutions. And my opponent is playing Trubbish. Uh, Fire Trubbish? I don't know what he's partnered this with. Could it be Flareon? Could be Flareon, but he'd have Colorless in the deck. So needless to say, he is going for a Bridget here. Which is fine. 100% fine. Um, I'm going to actually drop down the Wonder Energy, because it, it will make it so that he can't nail my hand with this stuff. It's going to be Salandit. So a Fire Energy drop onto that Backmon. Uh, we are just going to Wonder Energy... Actually, I can go for an Alolan Vulpix, so I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. Actually, it's a good thing I did it, because there is no Alolan Vulpix. Uh, I really will probably need the Diancie. And why not? I'm going to get 10 damage down onto my opponent's Pokemon. Bam. 10. Beep. Done. So unfortunately, we are having a pretty bad startup. I can drop an energy down, start getting this Diancy to start putting in some work. But uh, as long as we kind of hold off from letting them do damage with the Garbodor, we'll be okay. Uh, Max Elixir is also bad. He has a Salanda technically all set up. Another energy down with a Salanda. Obviously looking for Salazzles, and uh, this is just going to be a hard matchup right up because Garbodor... Well, Garbodor does not like Guard of War, um, but I don't know how Salazzle is going to be in effect to this. This is very similar to the... Like, I love all these texts. I have not seen this version. Um, I did not watch a whole lot of Worlds. I just watched the top uh, eight, so I was unable to really see. And we get another Fairy Energy, which means we have to waste it on the Sycamore. Uh, we are going to retreat into this. Now I can, if I can get a Curly off of this, I can evolve. 
into... I uh, Thank you, I do get a Gardevoir this turn. I do get a Guardi this turn. So I'll be able to go full out here. Um, I can evolve the Octillery as well, but getting that Gardevoir is kind of important. Kind of important. Now I do not have a Fairy Energy, but that is what my N is going to be for. Uh, we can see my opponent needs a... Uh, some sort of way of getting the uh, Trubbish out of there. The likelihood is it's going to be a Guzma. And my opponent does not need a lot of energy either, which is a huge, huge thing about Salazzle. It only needs two energy to use any of its attacks, which really is not hard to pull off. Uh, so we can see a bunch of damage, and if my opponent does put down the Garbotoxin version, we are going to see a lot of play here. Uh, but he does just drop it. Uh, we are going to just put in our we have to put our Gardevoir up. We see an Ultra Ball, which isn't bad. I am going to drop the Double Colorless Energy down. Is there anything I need? I should go for the Octillery. Um, I'm going to opt to get rid of uh, Tapu Lele and a Guzma. At least Guzma is now in the discard pile. I can use it at any time. Octillery is now coming in. I can draw at any time. But I will wait until after I play this N to draw my additional cards, because I could get a Rare Candy Gardevoir, which I don't... I don't even get a Fairy Energy. I do get a Choice Band. I will get a Floatstone off, and I'm going to have to discard some cards here. So we're going to go for the Floatstone and the Choice Band here, so he does not get that opportunity to set up Garbotoxin. Uh, we are going to go for an Ultra Ball here kind of discard a few more cards. I need to. I need a Fairy Energy. Uh, I will get a Curlia. This way I can evolve one of my rolls. Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, we are going to go for that Abyssal Hand. Please give me a Fairy Energy. This is absolutely insane. Th this is, this legit should not be happening. I can't attack. I cannot attack. I could not draw out of an N and an Octillery. Could not draw Fairy Energy. I think there's seven? But how many have I discarded? I've discarded three already. Could not get one. I think I got rid of the Wonder Energy too. Yeah, I got rid of the Wonder Energy too. So there are so many energy in the discard pile. I can't Twilight either. Now my, op my opportunity is to drop down the other double color list, but my opponent will have two Salazzles completely set up here. Oh man, our deck is just not running the way we want it to. Uh, they can hit for 110 without the Choice Bandit. Well, with the Choice Bandit, it would have been 140. So they can't two shot, but wait, they can two shot us with a Kukui. Uh, here comes that Kukui. Will be able to hit us. Uh, just goes for Heat Blast for 130. I can technically slow. Okay, that's. That's an interesting play. I'm going to actually rare candy. Obviously, I'm going to rare candy that one. Angulate. Okay, that one is down. I drop this down. We go for another N. I could have actually uh, sick and word, but it's all right. I need to end here. I still don't get very energy. How is this possible? How is this possible? And I've already played my energy for the turn, so I can't just bring in my other Gardevoir with the Acerola. I have also supported it already as well. Um, so I'm going to actually opt to get rid of this, so I have that opportunity to go for a Premonition here and get it. Um, I do want to just grab another Ralts. This will let me be able to get another Guard of War set up in case something else happens here. Alright, Premonition, show me the Fairy Energy! Oh, it was right at the back. It was right at the back. But I will get it. And I should be able to knock this guy out now. Um, it doesn't matter. I can end on the following turn with the VS Seeker. Or Gazma, for that matter. Uh, but my opponent will be able to knock me out, it looks like. Uh, we are going to go for that Abyssal Hand. Uh, grab this energy here. I will be very low on energy now. 
Uh, we're just gonna go for the secret spring onto you. We need to get a knockout here, potentially getting fairy energy. I am gonna actually super rod and put some energy back. Uh, this way I can potentially get them back later with Octillery or through a VS Seeker of some sort. But we are playing on a very high clock right now. This will knock out Ace Lazzle, no problem. Uh, 200 damage, uh, 240 damage. Uh, we get a Lowland Vulpix, very unnecessary card at this point in the game. Uh, we do get the Sycamore, which is necessary. Uh, but my opponent only has the Salazzle left, so if I can manage to pull through, getting another energy, getting through with some potential cards, I should be able to play here. My opponent actually goes for a Team Skull Grunt, which is absolutely fantastic for me, because it means that he's not going to be able to go for too much more. Um, two energies, we're just going to go for a Gardevoir play here. And uh, we are we're going to have to kind of hope and pray here. Whew. It's not looking good. That is for darn certain. So I have three of my double colorless energy currently in the discard pile. I will need one double colorless. I need a lot of cards. But it, it is the game. Let's let's do this. I got a double colorless. I got two. I don't have Rare Candy and Gallade. Uh, we don't have that opportunity to get a second uh, Gardevoir down. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And my opponent, with every additional prize, is actually able to use their first attack with more damage. Let, it, let me see what I'm getting. It is possible. But I gotta drop two cards. It's not possible. It is not possible. I get the rare candy. I don't get the ultra ball. Can I just not use this? I have to use it. Okay. And I've already supported for the turn. I'm gonna grab an Acerola. We're going to evolve. We're going to try and get this thing down. 150. I don't think this thing can knock me out. It does 150 back. With a choice spend that's only 180. So it cannot take me out. And I can Acerola it back up. We do see a Floatstone. Um, if he plays the Garbotoxin version, I will be in trouble. Uh, Floatstone down onto the other Trubbish. Ultra Ball. He is going for Garbotoxin. And this will shut me down. Actually just goes for an N. Maybe he doesn't have it. I don't need the Acerola. I can get it though with a Tapu Lele. That is fine. <sighs> this is very stressful. Very stressful. Bodybuilding dumbbells down onto the Garbodor. Heat Blast will hit me for 110. Um, but I have that ability to just go for it. Uh, we are going to Tapu Lele. We are going to go for the Acerola we just put back into the deck, which is absolutely fantastic we, we managed to do this. Um, I'm very happy that we did VS Seek that way. I know normally I don't, but this time around it was just it was amazing that we did it that way. We are going to drop this Rolts down. And uh, at this moment in time, we'll just be able to hit him and knock out the Salazzle. And we might actually be able to take back this match. Um, 
We are going to evolve into Gardevoir. We are going to go for that Secret Spring, get that energy back. Uh, he did not get a Garbo Toxin down, which was absolutely necessary for my opponent to win this game. Uh, we are we're looking a lot better. Premonition will showcase what we can get next turn. Uh, looks like a Rescue Stretcher, and then three Very Energy. I'm alright with that. I need the energy. Because I'm just going to be able to Ultra Ball. Uh, I can actually get one of my Gardevoirs back. I have all sorts of options now. Uh, so let's let's just go for the Infinity Force. We'll be able to knock out the Salazzle, take lead. Whew, what a matchup. Gardevoir, uh, Salazzle, Garbodor. This is an amazing deck my opponent's trying to play right now. Because the Garbodor does put a lot of pressure on you not being able to play abilities, which means Salazzle has that opportunity to hit for a little bit less damage. And again, its, scale, its first attack will scale with more prizes that you take. And that is going to be the game. We managed to sneak through that. Personally, I think we had a hard time there. Uh, it was a very hard matchup at first, trying to get ourselves set up. Um, but we got it, got everything going. We managed to save our game with playing that Acerola. And again, Acerola is like the key card to playing nowadays. If you don't know how to use her, you gotta learn how to use that card in, in the right situation. We were able to get it back into the deck. I think that was just by Fluke. I had no intentions of doing that. But by doing it and having that Tapu Lele come up, we were able to Acerola, get our Gardevoir out of there, put the brand new one up, take out Salazzle, and then claim this game. So that is going to be this deck. Personally, I think it's a fantastic deck but it is very hard to win against your super effective matchups there are a lot of steel decks out there that will be able to take you out so keep in mind it's not it, in comparison to the other two world decks that i've now covered being uh deluge blastoise and mega Otno, in the current meta it it is just a really good deck uh, like, this one's a really good deck. It's not like, oh my god, it's just going to destroy the metal like the other two did, like the rogues. This deck is really good, can keep up with a lot of decks, and uh, has a lot of potential to win games, uh, but there are a lot more ways for it to flop out. Uh, so, that is my opinion on it. I think it's, obviously, it's a world deck. You guys gotta try it out. If you guys haven't built it, you gotta try it out. And again, like I said, there's a lot of plays that I probably made that are just just absolutely terrible in comparison to the level of play that uh, Diego uh, Casarigo is able to play it at, at Worlds. Uh, but that is gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys aren't brand new here, please hit the subscribe button because it does mean the world to me. You guys come out and watch the videos on the regular. The next video, we will be looking over... Uh, Naotsu Suzuki's deck, the Galissapod um, Garbodor, and then we'll probably be looking at this Salazzle Garbodor soon too, because it seems to be like a lot of lower level mods want to play, or lower damaging mods want to partner up with Garb. So we'll see how everything goes, uh, but that is going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm going to get out of here. But until the next time, time out.